All right, what's going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Dylan and this is Vanboy Auto Styling. Basically, this channel is for me to uh, document all of the modifications and changes that I make on vehicles that I own. Right now, we're working on this 2016 BMW F30 328i. Um, I recently picked this car up. Um, I did an intro video on it if you want to go and check that out after this. So today, what we're going to be doing is vinyl wrapping this wood trim. Now, a lot of people out there are BMW purists and they, they love the wood trim. They stand by it. They don't change it out. Me, personally, I want a more modern look. I think this kind of makes the car look a little bit dated. So what I'm going to be doing is pulling this out and then vinyl wrapping it in a faux carbon fiber um, vinyl wrap. So the first thing that we have to do, obviously, is get the trim out of the car. So I'm going to kind of give you a little bit of a walkthrough on how to do that. What's great about BMW is a lot of the trim pieces in here are basically just held in by clips. So a little bit of finesse and not too much brute force, you can actually get them out with minimal tooling. So we're going to start here with the center AC vent uh, trim piece that's right underneath the iDrive screen. And what's great about this one is there's actually a little bit of a lip back here that you can kind of get your fingers behind. So what we're going to do is we're just going to gently start pulling on that and separating it from the vehicle. And again, it doesn't take a lot of force. Nothing in here is going to be um, yanking. We're not going to be yanking anything. We're just going to be applying enough pressure to get things separated. Now, down at the other end of the passenger side here, there this, there's this long skinny piece. We have to be a little bit careful with that one just to not um, damage it or bend it anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and get my fingers behind there. There's a couple clips behind that particular part that will come out. It just takes a little bit more care. There we go, those are free, and it's all free. All right, so as you can see here, we've got some connections that we have to disconnect. Um, these are for the front buttons up here as well as the uh, AC controls. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna push through the hazard lights and our door and lock button. And if you apply a little bit of pressure from the back, this will actually pop right out. And what's great about that is then from the front, you can actually disconnect this a lot easier. Um, there's a lot of stuff in the way in the back there. So that comes off just like that. Put that in a safe place down here in my center console and let that connection go back through. And then last one right here is just another simple connection. We're just gonna pull that out, let this wire come through and the trim piece is free. Set that aside for now. All right, so the next piece to come out is this driver's side air vent. Um, this one, again, you get a nice little access to it from this uh, this side right here. I'm going to try to do it without tools. However, if you have your pry tools, um, I'll link a description of some down below on Amazon that are great. I currently do not have some. I will be getting some very shortly. Highly recommend if you're going to be pulling on anything in your car to be using a, um, a pry tool like that. It just uh, helps you from damaging your trim pieces. But we're going to give it a go um, with just our hands and see how this goes. So I'm just giving a nice little bit of pressure, and that was perfect, it was just enough, I felt it come up. I'm gonna pull that out, just like that. All right, so next thing that we're gonna remove is gonna be this wood trim on the door handle. Um, again, this is where a pry tool would be your best friend. I'm gonna be using just a regular um, flathead screwdriver. There's a little clip underneath here that you can feel, um, even with just the finger, it's a little ridge. You're gonna insert this screwdriver or trim removal tool up in there and you're actually going to depress a piece of metal that's going to release this. Um, I'll try to catch it as best as I can on camera here. But again, I'm being very gentle with the screwdriver. I'm not too worried about if I scuff up my trim um, because this is going to be a long-term vehicle for me. However, if this is something you care about, you want to maintain this wood trim, definitely use a pry tool or think about wrapping your screwdriver in a microfiber or some painter's tape or something just to protect it. All right, so as you can see right here, Kind of see that little ridge it's right there in the center i apologize for the brightness i had to turn it up just so that you guys could kind of see what's going on but we're going to get our screwdriver up in there and we're going to try to push that away from the trim and just kind of get that to uh come loose for us and again if you don't want to scrape up your trim definitely use a um a pry tool for this all right so i actually went ahead and grabbed another screwdriver to kind of help out here as you can see i'm pushing against the um that indention just creating a little bit of a gap and i can feel that it's releasing something on the trim inside there i'm gonna walk down under here and kind of try to just guide it out with a little more pressure here we go about the release again once i can kind of get my hands under here i'm just going to kind of help 
pry everything out here. So I'll show you guys what it looks like from the back once I walk it the rest of the way out. Again, it's from the rest of the way up, it's just gonna be plastic clips in metal on the car. So you just wanna apply a gentle amount of pressure and get those out. And as you can see, back the camera up a little bit. As you can see, this is what the trim looks like when it is removed. So, see all those clips that'll be hooked into metal brackets on the door. This is that little piece that was getting stuck on the um, the metal piece that we were having to depress with the screwdriver. I'll show you that in the door as well. So right there is that little clip that was holding that in and again you'll see along the way it's just little metal bits that are holding everything in place. So that process is going to be the exact same on the passenger side as well as in the back seats. So I'm going to go ahead and pull those out really quick and then I will rejoin you guys um, over at the table where we're going to look at the vinyl wrap. Okay so just a quick note if while you're removing these um, armrest trims if you see some of these metal clips that get stuck on the armrest that is not a big deal. You can just um, get those off with your pry tool or a screwdriver or something, just pop those out and put them back into their um, their spot on the door, which you can look back at that previous clip and you'll see there's little indentions for where these uh, clamp on like that. So I'm gonna take these off and put them back onto the actual door of the car. All right, so quick update. I do have a casualty to report. As I was pulling the passenger rear door trim off, did get a little bit of a crack. Big oof. Um, again, I'm not too worried about it because this is a long-term car for me. Um, I'm sure the vinyl wrap will actually be able to cover that just fine. You won't really be able to notice anything. Um, and then eventually down the line, I'll probably replace this piece. Um, it's just a, uh, it's a good example of what can happen while you're modifying your car. Um, we're not doing things that was ever really intended to happen from the factory. They don't expect you to be pulling your trim out. So um, these clips on this one just happen to be a little too tight. And yeah, that's what can happen. Um, what is kind of cool about this though is uh, I've always I've always wondered that, you know, I thought this was just faux wood on here, like not real, like plastic or whatever. But uh, as you can see in there, there, if the camera will focus, there's actually some wood in that crack in there. So yeah, can confirm real wood used in BMW trim. But uh, yeah, again, not too worried. I'm just gonna throw some super glue in that for the meantime. Go ahead and wrap it as is, put it back in the car, and um, maybe down the line I'll end up replacing this piece. But yeah, let's move on to the last section, which is the um, the uh, center console area where the um, iDrive controls are. We'll uh, be pulling that out next. Okay, so final piece we're going to be removing, and the one that I've probably been dreading the most, is going to be this center console area where the iDrive controls are. Um, from what I can tell, the best way to kind of approach this is from the driver's side here. I do have a um, plastic tool. This is more for putting in window trim and uh, sealing down edges, but I think it'll be able to slide it up in here nicely. Yeah, and kind of provide me a good start to start prying this up. So I'm just going to kind of shove this under here, apply a little bit of pressure at the point that it's under. There we go. So as you can see, this side is rocked up now, or maybe you can see the driver's side has rocked up, so I'm just going to get my fingers under there, kind of apply some pulling, and then I'm just going to slowly rock it back and forth until this comes out. No complaints there. Excellent. Plastic is way better for removing things than screwdrivers are, let the record show. <clears throat> okay, so what actually happens from this point is we're going to leave that connection in, but as you can see here, there's actually three screws that hold in this whole kind of unit. And those are a T20 Torx head. So I'm just gonna use this uh, T20 screwdriver to back those out really quickly. We'll set these up here by our um, panic and door lock button that we removed from the top trim. And with those out, this unit should just come out like that. You can leave that resting right there. And we have our last trim piece out of the car. All right, so as you can see here, we've got all of our trim pieces laid out. Um, I have the one rear door handle that cracked um, in the back over there, curing with some super glue in it just to uh, help 
provide a little bit of rigidity while it's still in the vehicle. This is the, uh, the vinyl wrap that I decided to go with. It's called Rock Rose Vinyl Wrap. I found this on Amazon. If you're looking to do the same thing with your um, F30 or with any, any car really, um, a brand that I would recommend going with is Vivid. They make a really good vinyl wrap product. Um, I've actually wrapped my Civic Si, the entire car, in Vivid um, black metallic vinyl and it came out really nice. So definitely a good brand that I'd recommend going with. I chose this one because I liked the shine on the carbon fiber and it was also um, pretty affordable and had some pretty good reviews. So we will see how it goes. Just gonna get this opened up, get this tape off of here. What's nice about this is it does ship with a protective coat over the actual vinyl that you're gonna be using. So right under here, there's actually a little layer that will peel up and that's kind of a protective coating. I'll probably have to take it off once we start laying it on because that's going to um, prevent the vinyl from bending and stretching in ways that it needs to. But for the purposes of the initial laying and everything, it's gonna keep it from getting scratched, which is really nice. All right, so anytime we are vinyl wrapping or you really applying any kind of vinyl to anything, if the surface allows for it, it's good to um, wipe it down with some alcohol solution. This is just um, rubbing alcohol that you can buy at any convenience store, Walmart or Publix. And I'm going to put that on a microfiber towel. And we're just going to wipe down all the surfaces that are going to be taking the vinyl today. This just is going to make sure that there's no oils or anything like that on the trim piece or dust even. That's going to um, prevent the vinyl from having a really good stick. It's really good to go ahead and catch the edges as well since we are going to be tucking it around the back. You want those back edges and everything to be nice and clean as well to really promote the most adhesion that we can get from our vinyl. Go ahead and clean this up a little bit more and just clean it off. It's not unlikely for you to see dirt on the microfiber after doing this. Um, it is a vehicle, we use them every day, they get pretty dirty, it's all good. This is just cleaning off the oils and things that are going to keep the vinyl from sticking really well. All right, so once that's nice and clean, no residue left on there, we're gonna go ahead and take our vinyl and we're just gonna stretch it out and just kind of pre-measure a piece that's going to be a little bit longer than the panel we're wrapping. And you also, this is a good time to decide which side is gonna be up for you. And you wanna kind of keep your roll in that position. So if I'm going this way, this is the top for me. So as I set this roll down, I'm gonna make sure that this part always faces up away from me so that I know that this is the way that the weave is going and the way that I want the, um, the trim to match up. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut a piece out for our trim here. Right here, making sure to give me more than enough room. And what's nice about this vinyl roll is it does have a um, calendared backing. So I made a little indention with my nail and then from there, I can just follow a line that is on the backing paper. Go ahead and cut that nice and even. And again, this is my top, sending it to the side, ready to go again. Doesn't matter that much. It's just for uh, consistency if you have pieces that are gonna be next to each other. Honestly, none of these, this piece is kind of isolated on its, on its own at the top, so it doesn't really matter, but it's just good practice to get into if vinyl wrapping is gonna be something you do a lot. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start separating this from the backing paper. And it's okay if this touches your fingers or anything, just make sure your hands are clean. But vinyl is very, um, very good about being replaceable, so you can pick it back up, put it back down, reposition it as much as you need, so I'm not too worried about my fingers touching. It always sucks when it's a little bit rolled because that makes it a little hard to get the backing paper off. But I'm just gonna pull off a little bit of a tab so that I have enough room to kind of stick it to my trim piece. And that's gonna hold it in place while I continue to roll off the rest of the backing paper and lay the vinyl out across our panel. Go in the trash panel on the side. As you can see here, I just have it nice and laid out. And what I'll start doing is from the left side, I'm just gonna pick it up, start replacing it and making sure it lays nice and gently and nice and flat across the panel. And that's just gonna give us the best start 
for laying this vinyl down. It will be picked back up and repositioned a lot of times, but for right now, this is going to give us a good starting point. So, again, being careful with this little extra part sticking out that kind of looks like a bone. I'm going to hold from the back on the air vent and just kind of start smoothing this down. Parts that become tricky with vinyl are things like corners and edges. Um, so what I like to do is find that ridge and go ahead and lay that down. And then once you have that laid pretty well, you can actually pick it back up and reposition it and get rid of any extra slack that formed while you were doing that, while you were repositioning there. Again, this is a pretty straightforward piece. Not too many uh, bins or anything, just a little bit right over here on the edge. I do have a heat gun with me. It's down on the ground. However, what I want to do is get this laid as flat as possible before applying heat. And that's just so that we know that the vinyl is in a position that it's not compromised, it's not stretching too much for what it can do. And that way when we apply the heat, the heat's more of setting it in place than it is um, using it to kind of cheat and get it to uh, bend in ways that it's really not wanting to. And also when you apply heat to uh, patterned vinyls like this, like carbon fiber, it can actually change the pattern. It'll stretch it out and that can look a little funky. And on things like trim, inside of a vehicle, things that you're going to see every day, you kind of want it to be as smooth as possible. So we're going to do our best to lay it flat as we can without the heat first and then we'll come back through and heat up around our edges and where we tuck it in, things that just really aren't going to happen without heat. And as you can see, I'm not using any tools. I'm using my hands to lay things nice and flat, push air bubbles out. This is a nice vinyl, um, as well as the Vivid is too, that it has a um, a pattern on the back of it that allows air to be released from the vinyl so that it doesn't get trapped in and you end up with bubbles all over your uh, your trim piece. It kind of maneuvers the air out and away from where you don't want it to be, which is really cool. All right, so I've got this piece laid on pretty nicely. So what I'm going to do next is go ahead and remove that protective layer that is on the outside of our vinyl. So we're just going to grab that corner and peel it off. And you'll notice as soon as you do that, the vinyl feels a lot more pliable. Um, that's because this is providing a lot of extra structure that once you take that off, the vinyl will lay a little bit easier and um, bend a little bit easier as well. So I've got that all looking pretty good. A few little spots here that are kind of creasing, so I'm going to go ahead and get those off. Send that all back. Make sure there's no air bubbles along the top. No air bubbles on the front. And now what I'm going to go ahead and do is grab a razor and I'm going to go ahead and start just cutting off some of the excess and trimming out the exact shape of the vinyl that we are going to be, um, that's actually going to be on the trim today. All right, so when cutting vinyl, it's good to make sure you have a nice sharp blade. This one's pretty decent. Um, you just don't want to be dragging and having to go recut things that you've already cut. So it's good to just start with a nice strong blade. What's really great is those ones that'll actually break off and give you a new blade. This one's a, um, a solid piece, but it'll work for me today. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of insert in here. And I'm looking at the line of the trim and where it goes. And I'm kind of just cutting about an inch right now away from that just to go ahead and provide the basic shape while definitely giving myself enough room to um, trim more off later. It's always good to have excess than to cut too much away and find yourself with a spot showing of the wood. That's not what we want. So I trim the top there. I'm going to go ahead and rotate this and position it in a way where I can trim the bottom as well. Guy really likes his Mustang. All right, now from the bottom here, I'm gonna do the same thing. Finding just kind of a bottom edge. Um, this one has the aluminum on the bottom, so I don't have to go as far away because I'm gonna even trim past that, I know. However, just for safety's sake, trimming again about half an inch away from what is there. Okay, we'll go ahead and separate that piece. No complaints there, nice and easy. And then I'm going to take just a little bit off of this end over here, again, just to make things nice and easy as we go to start rolling and tucking into the back. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my heat gun, and I'm going to go ahead and start applying a little bit of heat kind of in this area and working on getting that to uh, tuck in nicely for me. 
Again, it doesn't take a lot of heat. You don't want to melt the vinyl. You just want to get it a little bit warm so that it becomes extra pliable. And you'll see, you'll know as soon as it starts to get to that point because it's going to start folding and bending way easier for you and just make it a lot easier of a job to do here. So again, I'm just going along that top lip, creating a little bit more stretch for myself. I'm bending it back, I'm getting it ready to tuck. Nice and smooth. I went with the gloss vinyl because I did I did like the shine that the wood provided. And when I had done this in a previous video in a previous uh, vehicle, I had done a um, a matte vinyl which looked fine. It looked good, but decided to try the gloss this time, and I, I'm really liking it actually. I think I can already see that this is going to look really cool. Really glad I made that decision. Okay, so as we get to a corner here. Um, it's important to not leave any slack on either side. Heat gun is smoking. This is a new heat gun. So what I'm going to do is kind of pull this corner up. I'm going to heat it, get out any wrinkles or anything. And I'm actually going to pull it all at one time so that no edges has more slack than the other, just like that. And let that tuck back. Again, not applying too much pressure. You don't want to poke through with the corner. You just want to make sure that it's wrapped around nicely and that it's not going to leave any excess on one side. That's going to start um, showing from the front of the trim piece. Again, just laying this down, tucking it again nicely against the backing of the trim here. A little bit of a corner there, so again, pulling up, stretching from this all sides, tucking that in nicely. Also be careful when you're using a heat gun. Um, any tools really, but with a heat gun especially, you're going to be kind of holding it near your hand. And this thing will burn your hand very quickly, so just be careful as you're doing this. And what's nice about this F30 trim is it has a, a pretty pretty tall side wall on the back, so you can actually see that it is gripping on to the back very nicely. And you don't have to worry about tucking it just yet. We can tuck it even after we've got it pretty much laid in place. This is really cool. I really like this car. And this is one of the first things I've done to it. I'm already liking how user-friendly modifications are. Besides that, uh, that door handle breaking, that was that was kind of a bummer, but it happens. All right, so I'm going to flip it over. And what we're going to work on now is along the bottom edge here, where the aluminum trim comes in. I'm going to heat that up. I'm going to push kind of against it and just go ahead and start creating an indentation so that I can see where I'm going to have to eventually cut with that razor blade um, along there. So I'll start down on this end. Again, just heating it up, applying some pressure. Getting it nice and tucked in in there. Using my fingernail just a little bit, I don't want to scuff anything, but I'm just kind of making an indentation where I know that the trim is going to end and that aluminum begins. Vinyl wrapping is one of those things that takes a lot of patience. Um, so I recommend just putting on putting on your favorite Spotify playlist and just being expecting to spend a few hours um, doing this if you want to really do it right and have a final product that you're, uh, you're proud of and that you're going to look at every day that you get into your vehicle. So. Pays to do it. Pays to do it right. Doing the same thing along this edge here, where the trim meets the air vent cutout. Just applying a little bit of heat and walking it down with my thumb, in line with where I'm going to be making a cut. And again, there's not a lot of poking. I'm not poking my fingernail in. I'm honestly using the front of my finger to just push down and letting that air release on the vinyl kind of do what it's made to do and make the air go away from where I am pushing. Leaving a nice crisp crease there. And that'll be our guide for when we go to cut this piece out. Again, nice and controlled. Good and even. Don't be afraid to go over what you've done again. 
Just make sure you've got it nice and perfect. We're looking for a factory finish here, so take your time and get it right. Okay, set the heat gun over there. And I think I'm ready to go ahead and trim this out. I can see a nice indentation of where the blade's gonna be. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my knife. Now what I'm gonna think about doing is, I'm not just gonna cut down the center of the crease that I've made. I'm actually going to be cutting against it, not on the aluminum because I don't wanna scratch the aluminum. But if you think about going in the middle, you're gonna be going on the side of the aluminum. So I'm just gonna kind of use my fingernail here just to create a little bit finer of a guide there. Okay. Again, I'm pressing down against the plastic side, the side that is not getting wrapped. And that's so that if there is any extra, it's on the vinyl wrap side and you can tuck away nicely or be trimmed later on. I just don't want to end up with not enough. All right, so I'm gonna start right here in this corner. Again, hugging the aluminum side of the crease, not applying very much pressure, just going nice and gently Allowing the blade to do its thing. Keeping it angled on that side of the aluminum. A little bit of a bend up here. Taking that right to the edge there. Cool. So then I'm gonna kinda pull up the backing here a little bit where this part connects. Make sure that I get a nice clean cut away. This blade there, go right down and cut through. Slowly pull, just make sure it's coming off nicely and it looks really good. Happy with that. I'll continue on my cut right here at the, uh, the corner where we meet the air vent. And again, cutting on the side against the plastic and not the wood side. Again, something that kind of happens a lot with working with vinyl is you may find that you're not actually cutting it and that is okay. It's all about patience, doing it right, going nice and slow, not applying too much pressure. And that fact that if you're not cutting it, that means that you're being careful to not apply too much pressure, so don't feel bad if it doesn't cut. Go ahead and re-angle myself here. Always staying in a position where I feel like I have pretty good control over the blade. Especially on things like corners and, and bends. Finishing out right here along the top of the aluminum. Good. And I'm going to kind of pick that little piece up where I know I don't need any vinyl. And go ahead and finish this cut out to the end. Make sure there's no complaints. Pull back slowly again. You'll see there may be some parts where it didn't quite cut all the way through and we don't want that to pull the rest of the vinyl up. So we're gonna go nice and slowly, just like that. Looks really good. Didn't miss any cuts. Came through good there and meets up. Perfect. Just pull the rest of this excess away. And there we go, we are almost done. As you can see, we now have a vinyl wrapped front panel. A few little finishing touches. You'll see as you cut that maybe some um, little wrinkles appeared or some little things like that. So we're just going to uh, try to push those back in again, not using too much pressure with the fingernail because the fingernail can actually cut the vinyl or crease it and just make some imperfections and we don't want that. I'm going to take the heat gun again, apply a little bit of heat to any problem areas, and just gently push on it with the fingertip, and again, you'll see that it'll go right down into where it needs to sit. No problems. Again, no stretch marks. Just no solid cuts. A little bit right here in the corner. Just gonna push that down. I may use a little handy dandy trim tool, that yellow card that I was using when I pulled out the uh, center console. 
just to get that corner tucked in. Um, and honestly, that's what those kind of things are made for. Just helping with that perfect fit and finish. So again, just looking for any spots in the corners or in the edges where it doesn't look like it's laying quite down as much as it needs to and just getting that in there nice and smooth. Hit the back edge one more time and get that ready because that's where we're going next to do our cutting. Awesome. So let me go grab that little trim piece and I will use that to kind of help with that little corner. Looks crazy in there right now. Okay. So again, I'm going to heat that corner nice and ready and I'm just going to use this card to kind of push a little bit of excess down in there if I can. And I may end up having to cut again, but let's see what that does. What that does. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take my blade. Just because I can see that there's a crease in there, I'm going to go into that. And just try to clean that edge up a little bit more. A little bit of excess here that's hanging off. Gently cut that, pull it away. Heat it again. Let's go for a nice lay. All right, looks pretty good. Good, and if you need, you can kind of separate the trim from the aluminum a little bit just to help get that down in there nice. That looks a lot better than it did a second ago. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is called post heating. It's gonna kind of heat over this whole surface Raising the temperature, making sure that we're getting a nice stick to the original wood trim underneath. And this is just going to help with the longevity of the sticking and staying in the car. Cool. Now we'll move along to the back. And if you were successful in laying everything nice and evenly in this channel down here, you can see in that channel, we'll be able to um, place the blade just nice and evenly along the inside there, cut it without any issues. So I'm gonna do that now. Take my blade, start at the end. I'd like to go out from the end first, so stick it in there, trim out, make sure we get a nice complete cut through the vinyl, and then from the start of that cut, I'll then make my way back this way. Again, not applying too much pressure, especially since we're going to be running over a lot of um, clips and bumps and things that may cause your blade to bounce, so we don't want to be using too much pressure where we lose control there. And for this part, don't worry about these lines being straight. No one's gonna see this, it's behind the trim. I'm not saying do a bad job, but it's not as important. Peel, make sure we are getting a separation happening. A little bit of a miss here, so I'm gonna just insert that in there. Trim that again. Look in here. Okay, it's coming along nicely. A little bit of extra from here from this corner, so I'm going to start here. Cut that out. Get that out the way. Okay, and just coming through, cutting out the excess, but leaving enough for it to tuck behind and grip onto that backing there. Looks pretty good, a little bit of excess in the corner. I'll see if I can heat that out. But if not, shouldn't be much of an issue. So, <clears throat> now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna use our heat again to lock this down in place. And you'll see if any part wants to peel up. Now is the time where you push it down and lock it in place. 
And again, with the heat, we're telling it where it needs to be and to not leave there. Moving right along. Continuing to just push down and tuck. You just want to make sure that every little flap is pressed down and is mated to the back surface nicely and that any air bubbles are not existing along that corner but they're tucked away as well. Some pieces I'm going to overheat a little bit and that's just because there's extra wrinkles that I want to make sure don't show up on the front for us. Again, one more post heat across the front here, making sure everything's nice and tucked away where we want it. No problems with peeling up and looking out of place. All right, and that is that piece done. So we now have, let me open up my filter a little bit so you can see a little better. We now have a nice carbon fiber wrapped front vent trim. Now for the sake of this video not being um, 10 days long, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap the rest of these pieces off camera. And then what I'll do is we'll, uh, we'll come back and I'll take some nice shots inside the car with everything put back in so that you can see how this is gonna look all finished. So give me just a sec and we'll be right back with you with some nice uh, cinematic shots of all this. All right, so as you guys can probably tell, it is another day. Um, I finished up the vinyl wrapping um, on that first day that I filmed, but I was in a rush, so I had to just throw it back in the car, and then I um, came out again today to shoot some of those uh, close-up shots to show you guys how it looked. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how it came out. Um, one thing I would definitely say is definitely go with the Vivid vinyl wrap. Don't buy this cheap stuff that I bought. Um, I'll link both in the description down below, but this one, the adhesive just isn't that great. It didn't really want to stay in place, especially around the wrapped corners and edges where it was really tight, even with heat treating. And also the finish just isn't that great. Um, while it does look fine on camera, I'm sure, and when you just glance by it, if you really pay attention to it and look really close, it doesn't look like real carbon fiber, um, which again, it's, it's vinyl wrap, so it's not going to look that real, but it should look better than this, I feel like. But I'll probably leave it in the car for a while um, until it starts coming off or something like that. Um, overall, I am happy with how it came out though. So let me know down in the comments if you guys are going to be vinyl wrapping your interior on your F30 or any car that you have. And be sure to follow me on Instagram at Vanboy Auto Styling and uh, tag me in any pictures of your interior vinyl wraps. I'd love to see what you guys are doing out there. But yeah, thank you for watching this video. My name is Dylan. This is Vanboy Auto Styling and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.